Hey guys, what's going on? It's me, Will Patterson, and today I'm going to be showing you how you can create some geometrically perfect logo designs very easily by using a couple of functions within Illustrator. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the basic principle by designing a very simple logo or icon. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little square here by holding shift and I've got to my square thing from here. And I'm going to change the fill and the strokes. I'm going to swap them around. I'm just going to get rid of that stroke there as well. So this is just a normal square right here. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to basically rotate this. I'm going to click it, press R, or go to the rotate function here, hold shift and click it 90 degrees. Now when you hold shift, it should just basically snap to 90 degrees. If you don't hold shift, it goes kind of anywhere you want it to. But hold shift, snap it into this diamond shape, which is 90 degrees to that end. So now that you've got your little rectangle diamond square thing right there, go ahead and go to your selection tool up here, highlight this, and we want to go ahead and basically duplicate this up. So hold shift and alt, and what alt or option does is it allows you to duplicate it. Now when I just tap it, you can see that my cursor changes to show me that this is ready to duplicate. So I'm going to hold shift and alt at the same time and duplicate it to about here. And then without clicking off this, I'm going to press Command D, which is going to duplicate that effect again. We can keep doing this as long as we want to, but I'm going to just keep it to three as this is the effect that I want. I'm then going to take this shape here and hold Alt, but not Shift, and I'm going to bring this up like so. You see those green lines there? Well, those are called Smart Guides, and we can turn them on or off by pressing Command U, Control U, or go up to Window and turn them off through the Window panel. I'm going to repeat this again, but I'm not going to do the command D option part because it's a bit different every time. And I'm going to make sure that these green lines match up like so as much as possible. And then I'm going to repeat the process over here. I could reflect this, but I'm going to just repeat it to about here. And now we've got our different squares right there. This is what we wanted, these little sort of star squares going on. Now, now that we've got this, we want to basically keep this so we don't ruin it in case we have to come back to it. So I'm going to just move it over here then create a duplicate by holding option and bringing it over here. And in fact, I'm going to create a new artboard by just clicking on this artboard panel down here. You can go up to window and go to artboards to see that panel. And then I'm going to just move this over here now that we've got a duplicate of it. So now that we've got this on a separate artboard, press Command G to group it. And we're going to hold Option or Alt and then hold Shift as well at the same time. And we're going to basically just drag this to the right. And then we're going to go ahead and change this color of the new shapes that we've just dragged to white, which will give us this effect. You can see here that I can't really move very much inwards of this. I want to keep the shapes like this so they don't touch each other. If I was to put these in a different sort of shape here, you can see that I don't want them to touch any of the other black parts. So when we look at it now, it kind of looks like we just got some black shapes right there, which looks pretty cool. So again, I'm going to go ahead and highlight this and drag a duplicate up here by pressing Alt. I'm going to make it a bit smaller so it doesn't take up much of the screen and then I'm going to group it. Now the thing that we need to do now is basically either using the Pathfinder tool or the Shape Builder tool, we need to basically cut it out so it looks like this. So the way that we do this is by cutting out the white shapes here on the black ones, because if you remember, these are actually shapes themselves, but we want it to look like this. So the easiest way that I found to do this is go to your Pathfinder tool. It's here on my screen, but if you want to find it for you, go to Window and go down to Pathfinder and you'll pop up there. Next thing to do is to collect these two shapes. So what I mean by that is we need to basically select these groups of white shapes and press Command 8. And when you do that, it's going to make these into a compound path. And then we need to go ahead and click the black ones too, and then press Command 8 as well to make them into a compound path. The next thing I'm going to do is we're going to highlight these two shapes, go over to my Pathfinder tool here, and I'm going to press minus front. And as you can see there, it basically gets rid of the white on the black. So I can show you this a bit easier by putting a new color on top of it. Highlight both of them. The color on top is red and it's going to be cut away from the black. And as you can see there, it works like that. Now, if I wanted to do it a bit differently, what I could do is use the Shape Builder tool. So we just highlight everything, press Shift and M or go over to the left here and you'll find the Shape Builder tool. Now, this basically allows you to merge shapes together by selecting them. So instead of merging them, I'm going to press Option, which is going to give us a minus symbol. And I'm going to basically just do the same thing all the way. And this can be really useful if you don't know how it all works. 
or if you don't know how to use the Pathfinder function. Also, so our logo is nearly done and it's looking pretty good now. It's actually a very simple kind of design here. So what I'm going to do is again, I'm going to create a duplicate over here. So we have like this sort of like story going on of how it all started, but it gives us a basis of going back to it if we need to. The next thing I'm going to do is create another duplicate because I want to create one with a gradient on it. But first I'm going to go ahead and ungroup this one or release the compound path and then I'm going to select the one in the middle and I'm going to move it 90 degrees like this and make an L. I'm going to bring this back up, scale it back up a little bit and I'm going to finish it off with a nice sort of gradient like most companies do now. So the, what I'm going to do is highlight everything, press G, go over to window, come down to gradient to get the gradient box up. If I can find it, there it is, gradient. And I'm going to select two colors. I'm going to select pink and drag it from the swatches into the gradient panel. And then I'm going to select a nice orange, I think. And I'm going to bring this to the black. Now it's collectively gradienting everything here, but I don't want to do that. I'm going to press G and then I'm just going to go and make one big gradient on this like so. Now that has been gradiented in a vector format. It looks pretty cool. I like it. There's a few things that I would change about it, but I had more time. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and I'll catch you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. See you later.